All right, so in this video, I wanna give sort of a behind the scenes look at one of my most viewed animations. You might've seen this in my demo reel, or you might've seen it just posted on like Twitter or Instagram. And this is the owlbear animation with the wings kind of shooting out. It's kind of revealing the wings and then doing this sort of like dive bomb attack and then sort of like 180s out of the attack. So something that I really enjoy seeing as an animator is looking at the sort of behind the scenes of an animation. So actually seeing, you know, the rig inside of Maya and sort of just seeing the animation before, you know, the render or any of the camera animation was added. So that's what I want to do here, kind of give you a behind the scenes look at this actual animation inside of Maya. We can take a look at sort of how I broke this animation down and just take a quick look at this animation here. So we have the rig inside of Maya and this is the owlbear character. Again, you might've seen it in the demo reel. And this is actually sort of a an alternate version of the original behemoth inside of Dauntless. So this particular behemoth I was working on was basically a variant of the owlbear. So this had a few different kind of model changes, but the rig was basically the same. Uh, I think the behemoth actually in Dauntless, this behemoth sort of had an ice effect. I remember it being like an ice behemoth so it was a little bit different, but again, it was using the same rig. So let's actually just play the animation here and we can take a look at it. So just hit the play button. So this is the actual animation inside of Maya. Swoops down, does this dive bomb, has this looping section for the actual kind of sliding across the ground, add a player, and then does the sort of 180 out of the, the attack. So one thing you'll probably notice if you've seen this animation in my demo reel or on Twitter, that there is an entire middle section that I did not show in my demo reel. And really the main reason for that is that it's usually a good rule of thumb to only put your best work in a demo reel. And it's okay to cut out sections, cut an animation early, you know, start an animation a little bit later if you wanna maybe cut out maybe what you felt like wasn't the best work, maybe you didn't have enough time to actually polish that animation. And there's a couple reasons I did that for this piece here. So once we have the wing reveal, the character pushes off and starts to flap up into the air. So one of the reasons I didn't include this in my demo reel is that the actual wing flaps, we had like a whole library of basic wing flaps that we could plug in to an animation. So I used that for the actual flying section. Obviously I did some tweaking and adjustments on the actual wing flaps for this specific animation. But for the most part, I grabbed these wing flaps from a library to make obviously the animation process way faster than hand animating wing flaps every time I needed to have this creature flap its wings. So that was one reason I didn't include it in the demo reel. The other reason was that, I mean, looking at it is not the best. <laughs> Not the best. There's a few issues. Definitely looking back, I would really want to change the sort of stop stall feeling that I definitely would still want to get in there. So like as as the creature is flying up in the air, I would want, you know, each flap of the wing, the owlbear would start to descend just a little bit and then catch itself on each flap, which was kind of what I was going for here. But the spacing on it just wasn't working there's just like a little bit of jitteriness on looking at sort of the root of the character kind of going up and down and kind of drops here, just hits a complete wall, goes back up, hits another wall. So this is something that, you know, I could go back into this file and really start finessing. Um, but I just realized that this section of the animation was not necessary to display the animation. Again, the wing flaps were something that, you know, I just grabbed and kind of reworked for this specific animation. So I decided to just cut it right when the bird starts to leap off the ground. And then basically this section on the descent. So basically the drop down and then the sort of like tuck into the dive section. And it's actually funny because cutting an entire middle section of animation out, I thought people would notice or wonder why the animation just stopped right after the reveal. And then in my reel, it just appears up in the air. but no one really noticed, no one knew really what this animation exactly looked like unless you fought against this creature in Dauntless, then you would obviously see this whole section here. Um, but again, it's good rule of thumb to 
really include your best work in your demo reel. So that's kind of what I wanted to do here. So I just cut that whole section out. Um, so we have the, the 180 out of here. And I've gotten a few questions just about the wings in general on this creature and how I approached animating these. Um, so if I come in here, I forget what control it's on somewhere. I'll find it eventually. It might be on, there we go. This little sort of wing control. This is a wing fold control, which is how I was able to animate the sort of quick reveal on the beginning of the animation. So we have this fold option. So all the way out, the wings are gonna be spread. Bring it to one, the wings are gonna be kind of tucked behind the arm there. So obviously I had to animate this for the wings tucking back under the arms. So kind of using the wings to motivate the 180 and then quickly tucking those back in. And then at the beginning section, really animated those, the wing fold controls to open them up quickly, kind of get a really big snap. And then everything else was animated just on these feather controls. So we had these feather controls that can kind of controlled, you know, an entire clump here. So I would definitely use those. I think I probably did maybe a little bit of translation on some of these for the snap. And then I would go in and actually animate the sort of overlap on the wings coming out. So it was a combination of using this wing fold attribute to open and close the wings, and then going in here and actually animating the separate individual feather controls to get the overlap working. Same on here. So you can see I have like the, the feathers kind of dragging behind. So the tip kind of reveals itself first, pops out, and then you can see the, the feather, these back feathers kind of overlapping in and settling there. And then again, just animating sort of tips of the wings to get this kind of reversal shape on the wings during this, this push off here. And this is something where, when I animated this, I actually didn't know about the LM Spring tool or the Overlapper tool, which would actually really come in handy for animating the individual wings here and getting the overlap working on this reveal. Because it's definitely pretty tedious work to go in here on the individual feather clumps here and animate those. So using something like LM Spring or Overlapper could help to get some nice overlap in there quickly. And then something like with these large controls here, these were something that I probably wouldn't use overlapper for those. I would just hand animate those and then probably utilize it a bit more on these inner wing controls, the sort of feather controls for this here. So another thing to kind of point out in this shot that I remember having quite a bit of trouble with of getting the feeling right was definitely this whole section right here the kind of flap down, the up, and then tucking the wings in, and then finding a dive bomb pose that worked. I remember I worked on a lot of iterations on this one specific pose to try to get something that looked cool, that worked, that felt like an actual kind of dive bomb to the ground. So that was this was something that I did quite a bit of iteration on, especially the sort of flap into the wings actually tucking back behind the owl bear. So like getting, figuring out a nice flow for the wings. And it ended up being a lot of, basically like kind of frame by framing the wings through here to make sure they followed a decent arc through this whole section. If I look like at this view, kind of just tracing, you know, a tip of the feather, trying to make sure it followed at least a decent arc as it tucked behind the owl bear, And then obviously with game animation, you're looking at it from every single angle. So you wanna make sure that you're at least getting a decent path through as many angles as you can. And I remember the 180 coming out was really tricky too, just making sure it felt motivated by the wings. So it felt like the owl bear was doing this 180 intentionally, again, to face the players that just kind of did that dive bomb attack through, so kind of 180ing out. And there's actually 
I animated two versions of this exit, which, which typically in game animations, you'll probably do stuff like this where you might have multiple exits out of one single attack to fit different situations during gameplay. So in this case, it made sense for the owlbear to do a 180 out because this attack is going straight at players. It's just sliding across the ground. So you can imagine it almost being like a clothesline type of attack. So it's just tracking the players with its claws out, just dive bombing straight toward them. So usually it would end up going past players. So it would just hit them and keep on flying. So knowing that it made sense that for the most part, it would want to 180 out to face the players that just pass because you want to try to think of the actual you know personality you want to give these creatures thought process so doing things like this can really show more thought process in a character like this during gameplay so we know this attack is probably going to just hit players and then continue going at least for a little bit so it would feel a little weird if the owlbear passed players and then when it exited out of the attack, it just faced the same direction it started in. It just made a bit more sense for it to immediately 180 out to stay engaged with the players it was fighting and just try to keep, you know, eye contact on them at all times. So we had two versions. This was the version I think is used in gameplay most of the time. And then for situations where it does make sense for the Albert to actually not do a 180, there's another version I animated where it just flies up in the air and has something similar to this, but just imagine it not doing a 180. So it kind of swoops up, the wings close, and then it lands facing the same direction. So it's basically like removing the 180 and having it land the, the same direction it started in. So one of the last things I actually wanted to look at in this shot is taking a look at my graph editor. So uh, my lead, uh, Eddie Gonzalez, would always open up my graph editor and I was always terrified when he did because my graph editor is always a complete mess. Usually it's always a complete mess. So this is on the spine, like cog control. Looks like it's baked off on ones. Um, so we can kind of come in here and see some of the, the issues with the graph editor. So obviously there's definitely some, some issues with it, but usually the way I like to animate is I want to make sure it looks good from every single angle. I'm looking mainly at just how it looks in the viewport and not necessarily how my graph looks, but I definitely use the graph editor. If there are weird issues with my animation that I can't quite figure out if I'm just looking at it straight in the viewport and chances are, if there's like weird hiccups in your animation, you can just open up the graph editor and you'll usually kind of immediately see those problem areas in your graph. So this is the rotate X, the sort of twisting on the main control here. So looking at this, this curve, it looks kind of strange. So it rotates one direction as it moves up, then it quickly rotates the opposite direction and then it quickly rotates the other direction again, then the opposite direction. So looking at this graph, it looks a little bit strange, but looking at the actual animation itself, I believe this is mainly getting in when the wings reveal the, the sort of rotation that would happen on the chest. As you, as the bird kind of whips the arms out, you're going to get the chest rotating this way because the arm is pulling that rotation that way. Then this one reveals and it rotates that way. So you're getting this kind of twist in the body. So that's what this kind of graph is showing just by looking at it, what's probably happening in the animation on this quick snap of the arm that we're getting some like offset on the chest there. And there's some strange ease in and ease out on some of these curves, but usually people won't see your graph editor unless your lead happens to open up your scene <laughs> then they might. But yeah, usually I like to focus on kind of how everything looks in the, the viewport itself and whoa, what is going on? Yeah, so this is some strange strangeness happening here, but yeah, this graph looks pretty messy on this spine, one of the chest controls here. A little messy, but probably could use some cleaning up, but if it if it works in the viewport, that's usually what I, what I focus on. So that's gonna be it for this video. Just wanted to do a really quick kind of behind the scenes of this specific animation so we can take a look at the rig and kind of see how kind of see how everything was set up. So hopefully you found this helpful getting kind of a behind the scenes look at 
a game animation for Dauntless. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and like for more future content.